Hello again, friends. It's me, Miss Christina, with our book club um, on uh, the mystery, Detective Gordon, the first case. We are on chapter five. We have read two times before this, one and two, and three and four. And what just happened at the end of chapter four was we had met um, this baby mouse named Buffy. Detective Gordon named her and hired her to help with his police work and she is so happy and she is sleeping at the police station and so is Detective Gordon. So here we are on chapter five, investigating new tracks. And we noticed that the first illustration has this squirrel friend coming back. So let's see what happens in chapters five and six. Here we go. Chapter five, investigating new tracks. Next morning, Detective Gordon woke from a dream. He had dreamt that he was running along a path. He ran faster than a deer and he climbed a tree as nimbly as a squirrel. Wretched robbers, someone cried in a shaky voice. Robbing wretchers, whoo! The detective didn't open his eyes immediately. <clears throat> He wanted to stay in his lovely dream. Who was that waking him? Villainous thieves, cried the little creature. Thieving villains. It must be the squirrel, thought the detective. He opened his big round eyes. It was the squirrel. Good morning, said the detective. The thieves have been here, have been there again said the agitated squirrel. Detective Gordon thought about his night vigil and how he had caught Buffy, the little mouse. Not really, he said. It was only a single nut for a hungry individual. They've taken each and every single one. The whole lot, cried the squirrel. Good morning, by the way. The squirrel caught sight of Buffy lying in the other bed. Only her nose and whiskers showed above the eater down. Buffy was asleep. The squirrel stared. Is that the thief? And you caught it and put it in prison and now you're guarding it? The detective explained that he had hired an assistant to help him solve the case quickly and that the two of them would come as soon as they had eaten breakfast. The squirrel showed no sign of leaving. He had clearly decided to stay, but the detective didn't want to get out of bed until he was alone. Off you go, he said briskly. Hurry now and guard the tracks. Don't touch anything. The squirrel hurried off and the detective got up slowly with difficulty. He stood bent over by the bed, breathing heavily. He had been so light and quick in his dream. Then he got dressed and put the kettle on. Up you get, Buffy. We have a thief to track down. Before he finished his sentence, Buffy jumped out of bed and saluted. She was in a cheerful voice. Good morning. Now we're going to have a little morning cake. They're kept in the second big tin, the morning tin. He opened the lid and set out four cakes, vanilla cakes with strawberry jam. tin, chief. You'll find out soon enough. They ate in peace and quiet, especially enjoying the jam. As they got ready to leave, Buffy said, shall we take the pistol, chief? No, said the detective quickly, not the pistol. They trudged through the snow. The sun shone, but it was cold and the detective regretted leaving his gloves behind. All the animals were awake now. A magpie and the crow were bickering. Sparrows were for foraging in the treetops and there were rabbits digging in the snow. The detective and his assistant saluted them all. They came to a hole. They came to the hole in the pine and the detective gave it a bitter look. The squirrel already sat in the hole complaining. Buffy scampered up. What a sprightly and clever little assistant I have, the detective thought proudly. 
Bravo, he said when the mouse reached the hole. The two above him looked down in surprise. Bravo what? The hole is very empty, chief. Hmm, said the detective. Are the nuts gone? The nuts are very gone, chief. Buffy climbed down and the two police officers began to investigate the tracks in the snow. The alleged burglary had occurred in fresh snow. That was perfectly clear. A number of tracks led to the path. Somebody had gone back and forth between the hole and the path with stolen nuts. Who or what? Detective Gordon kneeled low to look at the tracks more closely. Bother and dash, he burst out. Where's the dash, chief? You don't need to call me chief every time, the detective whispered. Thank you. It's quite hard to say dash, chief. The problem is that the thieves have deliberately concealed their tracks. First, they ran back and forth with the nuts. Then they dragged a fir branch over the tracks to wipe out the footprints. The squirrel stood beside him, wringing his hands. Will I get my nuts back? The detective gave him a sharp look and raised his index finger slightly. We must think, he continued. He walked around, humming grumpily. He bent down again. He went over the trail and hummed some more crossly. Then he found a fir branch beside the trail, checked it carefully, and his hmm almost sounded pleased. Then he went for a long walk in the forest, looking hard at trees until at last he said, Ha! He came back smiling. Now I think we can draw some conclusions. The squirrel was about to ask something, but the detective raised a finger. Chapter 6 Chapter 6 is called, The Assistant Goes Tracking on Her Own. This is how it works, works, said Detective Gordon. He explained that two quite small animals had carried out the theft together. They had planned it. They were aware that it was a crime to steal. They didn't want to be discovered, for they were very smart. The squirrel and the mouse were dumbfounded. How, how, how? stammered Buffy. The detective explained his thinking. Anyone who dragged a fir branch over his tracks did it to conceal them. Therefore, he or she knew it was wrong to steal. When the detective had looked carefully at the snowy white fir branch, he had noticed that the snow had melted in two places on each end where small hands had grabbed the branch to drag it over the tracks. Therefore, there were two of them. Furthermore, the fir branch had been taken from a small tree quite, the way, quite a way off in the forest, and they had brought it with them. Therefore, it was planned. And therefore, they were smart. Bravo! Buffy felt proud of her chief. We can rule out that this is a poor, small, hungry thief who has taken one nut. These are significant thieves. Significant thieves should be in prison, said the squirrel. She was up, the squirrel was upset. And small thieves too, by the way. Buffy blushed. The detective said, I think that whoever stole because she was so hungry that her stomach ached is, has not committed a very serious crime. Why not, protested the squirrel. One way or the other, the nuts are gone. Think of the poor owner who's missing his little nut. I won't get it back just because it was a small thief who ate it. Detective Gordon raised his finger and the squirrel was quiet. Sometimes he couldn't help interrupting. How many nuts do you own? 15,704, said the squirrel quickly. 15704, oh, the detective nodded. We must have a forest where everybody is happy, he said. The crime shall be punished, but if someone is in trouble, 
say they're dizzy and about to faint and need a bite to eat. We're understanding. We must make allowances in the forest, all of us. All of us allowances, the squirrel scoffed. <sighs> now I'm so angry I can't speak. I'm going. And off he went, striding for home. Buffy breathed out. It can't just be any animal who's done this, said. Oops, the detective said that. It can't just be any animal who's done this, the detective said to Buffy. Hmm. Buffy scratched behind her ear and thought, who could it be? She thought about rabbits, beavers, birds. No, not birds. They would have flown. She thought about hares, hedgehogs, bumblebees. No, not bumblebees. They were There were hardly any bumblebees in winter. Then she found herself thinking about the most dangerous animal of all. The most dangerous and the most cunning. Then she thought about two such animals, two dangerous and cunning animals. Buffy grew very scared. She needed to make a dangerous and important investigation. The very thought made her shiver, but she must do it regardless. Buffy was a policewoman now. She had to show that she was up to it, and she had to pay for that nut, old nut somehow. Chief, I have an idea, she said. I think we need to cover a lot more ground in our search. Though through deep snow, down narrow dens, and up into tall trees, Detective Gordon sighed deeply. <sighs> he was already very tired. Chief, I think I need to do this alone. The detective breathed out and smiled. <sighs> Bravo, he said, how courageous you are. While you're at it, I'll go home and make a list of suspects and do some stamping. I'll warm, I'll warm some milk for when you come home and we'll eat lunch cakes from the last big tin. Buffy wanted to ask something, but Detective Gordon merely raised a finger. So the two police officers went their separate ways. Buffy had a plan. She wanted to interrogate a lot of mice, rabbits, and hares. She would ask them if they thought the most dangerous and cunning animal had stolen the nuts. She visited all the animals she knew. She wormed along tunnels into the nests of field mice who nodded gravely when she asked them. She burrowed down into sandy rabbit holes, and the rabbits also nodded gravely. Hmm... She scampered in over vast fields, chasing hares who also agreed that it would be typical of, most of the most dangerous and cunning animal to steal nuts now as well. Buffy felt sure. Now it was time for the second part of her plan. She climbed high into the tree and spoke with the sparrows. Wrens and finches. She gathered 10 small birds around her. In a whisper, she instructed them to fly out in every direction to look for the most dangerous and cunning creature, even a long way away. Go and look in the name of the law. She felt very proud saying this. All the birds fluttered and disappeared on command, off to survey the whole forest and then to report back to Buffy with the whereabouts of the most dangerous and cunning animal. As soon as she received... And soon she received her answer. A little wren came flying out of breath. The most dangerous and cunning creature had been found in his hideout. It was a very long way away. Now for the third part of her plan. Buffy had no time to lose. With a pounding heart, she set off. The hideout was beyond the forest, beyond De Detective Gordon's pre precinct. But the law knew no bounds. The police must catch the thieves wherever they might hide. After a long time, Buffy arrived. She slipped down into the lair itself. Her heart was still pounding from fear and excitement. She was so scared that her tail trembled, but she crept along through the dugout. The smell was dreadful. Deeper and deeper she went. 
It grew darker and darker. At last she spied the most dangerous and cunning animal fast asleep. She smelled its bitter stench. She saw its sharp teeth. Buffy tiptoed bravely around, looking through the entire lair. But she couldn't find any nuts. The thief had probably hidden them somewhere else. He was very cunning. Then she sneaked quietly out again. Outside in the snow, she breathed fresh cold air to calm herself. She was very pleased with what she had done and she rushed home to the detective. Her heart was pounding with anticipation. And that's the end of that chapter, friends. We are on to chapter seven, which is called The Police Think and Stamp. So I wonder what you think. Who is the most dangerous and cunning creature? Who has Buffy suspected? Whose lair did she just visit looking for nuts and evidence? I don't know, but she had a lot. She had three parts of her plan and she did them all. She's working so hard, even though she's young. She's figuring out the problem and trying things. Wow, that reminds me of you. My friends, thanks for joining me again. And I'll see you next time to read more of Detective Gordon's The First Case. Bye.